cheesy about this, but we're not just in, in this information war like a defense ship for the Republic, but the whole planet. The genetic engineering, the rise of the robots, what the globalists are doing, saying they're building a post-human world in their own words. This is truly not just a human defense network, but defense of the planet itself against an out-of-control psychotic elite. Paul Joseph Watson, it's hard to get you to host the show. You're a busy man. More Twitter impressions than the BBC combined. A crazy time to be alive. We have Media Matters, which means the mouth of Soros, saying ban us from Google, period, today. They say ad roll banning us uh, is, is not enough. That's why it's critical for folks to financially support us more than ever when they purchase the great products at InfoWarsStore.com. I wanted to just ask you, what do you make of the Atlantic coming out, calling to use continuity of government, martial law, suspension of Congress, basically, but like, like saying all Republican leaders are illegitimate, like they were killed in a nuclear war, and have the Democrats declare basically civil emergency and have a new election that Homeland Security oversees, something Obama did before he left office, and uh, Trump ordered that it go back to the states. The bureaucracy just ignored the president. So we're in a state of civil war, a coup, a soft coup, a deep state. Uh, they, they admit you know, basically the seventh floor, as they call it, is running this. This is an incredible time to be alive, Paul. So on that front, and don't say the name of the special report, because I know it's months in the making, but, but we were talking this weekend and you declared that you're about to come out against the worldwide pedophile network yourself with deep research. So we're, we're not retreating, as the Austin American statesman said. We're clarifying and getting ready to go on the offense. So those two points, then tell us what's coming up, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to punch out right now, my friend. All right, thanks, Alex. Yeah, I mean, on the point you just mentioned, the idea in the light of this Pizzagate thing, whatever you think of Pizzagate, that pedoph pedophilia, global pedophilia, has no connection to global elites, to people in positions of power, is manifestly, provably, complete BS. And I know that because I researched it about 15 years ago. It was one of the first things I heavily got involved with when I first started working for InfoWars. I built entire giant archives just of mainstream media news, of reports out of every single country, Portugal, France, Belgium, Holland, any European country you want to name. In every single case, the major pedophile busts, the sex traffickers that get busted, in every single investigation, it had links to police, chiefs, to judges, to celebrities, to people in government. Every single major case. So for the media to come out and say, oh, this Pizzagate thing's been debunked, that means the whole issue's debunked. There's no link between global sex trafficking rings and the global elite. Well, I'm afraid that's complete nonsense. They know it's nonsense. That's been public knowledge for the best part of two decades. And if they think we're going to shut up about it because of this Pizzagate stuff, then they've got another thing coming. So I'm going to make a giant video about it, bombshell after bombshell, documented examples of where these cases with the top pedophile network smuggling children are always in every single instance tied into the global elite. And the Clintons- no, it's not a conspiracy theory. They know it's not a conspiracy theory. I so we're going to expose it 10 times more after all this stuff happened with Pizzagate, right. whatever you think of Pizzagate. I love seeing you get angry, story Paul. 10 times harder. Absolutely. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to let you take over. I just want to add this point. We're going to skip this break. We'll just skip both the network breaks. You have more time today, so I'm cutting in. Paul, again, the media misrepresents my retraction clarification last week. We know MSM focused out of the whole pizza gate that was about pizza being code words and pedophilia all over the world. That's an FBI manuals to one place with all these Democratic bigwigs going some of which Podesta, I say openly, has connections to this, and we're investigating him and are, are, are on his tail. But then to say the employees at a place or the owner, you, you, no, that goes too far. We were covering other reports and the fake stuff that got put out in the news, uh, you know, about basements and, and menus of half-dead kids, that's all crap. So when we're wrong about our good faith research to help kids, not meant with any malice of forethought or intent to do harm to people who don't even know, you know, like Mr. Alifanis, that was done from a pure heart. And then when we're wrong on something, we'll say, hey, this area, people need to leave this place alone. And when they need to go look at Hillary's top you know, person in Haiti caught smuggling kids 
and and getting convicted and Epstein and the plane and and her and her uh, representing pedophiles and like you said we're I was already planning to get into this before this was you know ever broke because I knew Trump was going after it look how Trump's going after it so you go after all the documentation that you first were doing for infowars.com 15 years ago let's get back into all that now cuz you know you get on a subject like vaccines for a few years then you move on then you got to go back educate a new generation same thing with the pedophile networks how they use it to control i want you to just attack them on all fronts because it's clear they know worldwide people are moving against them they want and these networks are the biggest groups calling for censorship and for shutting us down so they want to fight they better believe they got one and we're going on our absolute maximum offensive now with everything we've got. And when people support us at InfoWarsStore.com or donate to us or, or buy the products or spread our links, they are defeating this evil, 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 evil network with the UN and Salon and others openly trying to push the normalization of pedophilia right now. And I'm sorry, they try to come out of the closet. It's, it's not going to happen. We are going to absolutely rip open the closet and shove spotlights in there. And it's happening now. And we'll do the best we can, you know, in these investigations to obviously as we're kicking down these metaphorical doors to not step on innocent people. But we are in the defense of children and their best interest and others. And we are coming for the new world order. Paul Joseph Watson, I'm going to unplug or I'll keep interrupting. Please uh, continue. All right. Thanks, Alex. Yeah, you mentioned censorship there and specifically John Podesta. We have the big media matters hit piece out today. I say today, there's one every day because it's media matters. We've exposed. There were two. There were two yesterday saying censor. Sorry. Yeah, but well, Alex, they wrote articles six years ago, but her whining about the fact that Matt Drudge was linking to us. Remember, and you know, I met Drudge about what four years ago now, and he laughed about it and said because of that he would link to us more. So thank you, Media Matters. You made us about 10 times bigger in the past six years, thanks to your butthurt bitching and whining. So carry on with that. Please carry on, Media Matters. And you know, Alex, it's, it's obvious why they're doing it, because we know it's documented. We've had the reports. We've had the investigations. Daily Caller did a big investigation back in 2012. They met Brock. Podesta, this progressive media umbrella company, they met with the Obama administration every single week in Obama's second term, probably in his first term as well. Also, they David Brock, the David Brock is intimately connected to all these top Democrats and people and the whole investigation. Shouldn't he recuse himself from Pizzagate? Oh, no. In all of his so-called articles, nothing mentioned about it. No, Alex, this is what I wrote back in 2012 from the Daily Caller investigation. Media Matters brags about how it works with the White House to control big media networks. This is a quote from a Media Matters employee. We were pretty much writing their prime time. He's talking about Media Matters writing the prime time script for MSNBC. Well, I knew that before well, they admitted it because you'd see word for word them attack us and then at night the exact words on Rachel Maddow. Go ahead. Yeah, and then he, he goes on to say, quote, but then virtually all the mainstream media was using our stuff. So it was a not even a disguised Obama front group. They were literally writing the propaganda that was on MSNBC, NBC, CBS every single night. They even bragged about targeting reporters and making them freak out if they covered certain subjects. Here's another quote. If you hit a reporter, say a beat reporter at a regional newspaper, all of a sudden they get a thousand hostile emails. Sometimes they'd melt down. So they viciously vindictively they're a bullying group reporters. censoring free speech and now they're getting their ass kicked so they want us openly shut down our advertisers all gone that they're openly calling for that organizing it against us listeners i want our coffers flooded we are under a direct globalist attack infowarsstore.com we have 30 percent off on the x2 good uh, halogen right now and on the bio true selenium paul exactly alex they've targeted us targeted as selling products now they're targeting YouTube revenue. They go through literally 20 of your videos and take screenshots of PlayStation or Trivalgo or other companies that have ad advertised, again, not directly by choice. It's just a general Google AdSense mechanism, but they're directly targeting individual advertisers now. And why? Because they've lost the debate. They get their butt kicked on the issues over and over again. So they always have to resort to these dirty, underhanded schemes and tactics to try and censor us. And it's not going to work. 
just as it's not going to work in places like Pakistan, and this is what I'm going to get on to talk to talk about, Alex. You know, it's not that far removed. Look at what's happening in Pakistan. Google and Facebook are now working directly with the Pakistani government to tackle, quote, blasphemous content. They're helping the Pakistani government under Sharia law. Same thing in China. Same thing in China. Microsoft is helping censor. Exactly. So there's a Pakistani blogger called Ayaz Nizami, a pseudonym, who left the faith of Islam, who criticizes Islam. Facebook is helping to expose him now. There's been hashtags on Twitter, hashtag hang Ayaz Nizami. They're openly calling for his execution. Of course, that's completely allowed by Twitter. They don't give a damn about censoring that. They'll censor us all day long, though, for, you know, using the wrong word. Saying faggot on Facebook will get you a 30-day ban. But Facebook is now working with a Sharia law government to literally hunt down thought criminals. And Germany has hired executed. former Stasi to help a spy on folks to shut down free speech. And we know they're using Muslim brigades at Facebook now to go around censoring people that are being given this master moderation level. So we literally have radical Islam now as the cultural enforcer of the left. Exactly. So it's not a private company. It's working with government to harass and target people. I'm going to stop it. I'm skipping all the breaks uh, except for the, net, the, the local ones. See, have more time, Paul. Go ahead. Yeah, so the point is people make the argument, oh, Facebook's a private company, Google's a private company, they can do what they want. Well, Alex, they're no longer private companies, they're monopolies, okay? If you get censored off YouTube, there are virtually no other options. Your content is buried. Eric Schmidt came out a few days ago. He said, oh, we're not going to censor you, we're just going to bury your content so nobody can see it. Oh, gee, thanks, that doesn't sound like, oh, yeah, that's actually censorship, isn't it? It's the very same thing. Eric Schmidt on record saying that's what he's going to do. Google is a monopoly. They control virtually, what is it, 90, 95% of search traffic. There's no other platform like YouTube. They know it. They've got the monopoly on it. It's no longer a private company situation when Facebook, Twitter, and Google are working with governments to harass people, to identify them, to target them, whether it be in Europe with hate speech laws. You know, we've had cases where people in Holland, people in Germany have criticized the migrant policy of their governments on Facebook, on Twitter. They get home visits from the police. And who's that thanks to? It's thanks to Facebook and Twitter giving police their home addresses. So don't give me this BS about Facebook and Google and Twitter being private companies who can do what they want. That line has long since been crossed. They're basically government entities now. This is corporatism, and they're using it to strangle free speech. As I they're said eating my salad, Paul, as I said eating my salad, they are attempting a hostile, multinational, global takeover of the nation state, free speech, the internet, you name it. It is a criminal, hostile takeover, publicly declared by a bunch of arrogant eugenicists. No, and now we see it with you two. I mean, there's an article out of the Financial Review here. Car makers Holden and Kia are pulling ads from YouTube as boycott widens. So you think, well, maybe it's like ISIS propaganda, right? Beheading videos. That's understandable that they wouldn't want their ads to appear on those kind of videos. No, it's, quote, men's rights and anti-feminist content. So if you get up on YouTube and you criticize Triglypuff or Big Red or any of these ridiculous screeching feminists, that's now hate speech. Your channel gets demonetized. There are literally now hundreds or thousands of political commentators on YouTube who are bashing the mainstream media, beating them at their own game, and the mainstream media absolutely hates it because they know we're dominating YouTube. This is censorship. Even Vice.com, which is, in its online version is this far regressive left social justice warrior sewer, basically, at this point. Even they came out and said, I was right. The right or conservatives, libertarians, anyone who's basically authentic and not controlled, you know, they're upset about freaking PewDiePie. He's not even political. Those people who aren't controlled are dominating YouTube. They're absolutely terrified about it. So now they're conflating, quote, extremist content, which is ISIS videos, which is jihadist propaganda, beheading videos. They're taking that, conflating it with anti-feminism, men's rights, and basically anything. And that's, and that's what not, Media Matters is directing that yeah. we be completely shut off, which is torturous interference. No, exactly. 
they go through Google's updated terms of service for YouTube, and it says basically anything controversial can be demonetized. It's literally going to destroy the careers of all these YouTubers who are taking on the mainstream media and winning. And that's why this is happening. It's a fake, contrived moral panic created by the media and by these big corporations. Are we skipping the break? Yep. Yes, Paul, right, the, break is at, uh, the break is at 20. We're going to send you an atomic clock. The next break is at 30. But listen, let me just make this point in closing. You'll we'll have six minutes. You'll come back with 18 minutes and, 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 then, and then five minutes, okay? Here's the deal, Paul. Matt Drudge is right. He was right two years ago when he visited or a year and a half ago. We should be already involved in a massive exodus away from Google, YouTube, Facebook, you name it. While we project our content there and while we recruit people away to the new free web and let everyone know it's your mission to go to drudgereport.com or infowars.com. We've got a widget coming out that's its own little app that you just PC or uh, Apple or Linux, whatever it is. You just put it on your computer, then you can share it with people and it's got an interface where you can share clips and chat and talk to folks. And so we're gonna try to get our millions of listeners to download that and then to share that. And that won't save the world, but it's that idea. We've been on YouTube, we've been on Google, the same content will dominate anywhere. I mean, we have over a million downloads of our podcast that is just an old-fashioned version I don't even promote every day. We have millions and millions that tune into our own streams every week. Then we're on commercial radio, close to 250 stations right now, some of them gigantic. And I don't even put out the list of stations because they'll try to boycott and harass those. Since I finally stopped listing our stations, we just they exploded the last few years. I had that idea and I knew it would work. And why does the station need to be given credit nationally? They don't. And the listeners like Fight Club just spread the word behind the scenes, financially support them. And when we go from being on on the weekend to being on at night to being on during the day, 50,000 waters in some cases in some of the biggest cities in the nation. And again, these globalists are all centralized. So we're in guerrilla warfare everywhere. That's why InfoWars is so well positioned to withstand all these assaults. And we're under big ones. We're under the biggest yet on every front, believe me. And they get bigger every week. But... It's making us mobilize and go to the next level. And that which doesn't kill us only makes us stronger, to quote Frederick Nietzsche. Uh, so absolutely. So call to arms, Paul. Your, your fans love you. They're there. Ask them to more than ever. You know, uh, we need to create a newsletter for Paul Watson and tell folks I'm being censored off this stuff. You may have to get my comments and commentary and videos and personal email with Paul Watson. We need to set that up with our email system. That's the way Newsmax does it. We've been working with them. They're great folks. To really understand, we've got to go back to kind of a 1997-98 model underground to build our own dark web uh, to be able to communicate because we're now at that point, Paul, where they're openly saying they're going to shut us up. We've got to build our own system that's even bigger. Obviously, we're gigantic. But InfoWars, you know, getting a few million visitors a day, you know, that's nothing to what we do on all these other platforms together. But the good news is, People now know we're under assault, so our our platforms are getting bigger. So, Paul, I know the content's great. You're kicking butt. I need you to get in the brain factory here with me and really come up with some strategies to mobilize our listeners in this call to action. They're on the front lines uh, because without them, the enemy's going to win. Paul Watson, I'm totally unplugging now. Go ahead. All right. Thanks, Alex. And we got a guest coming up to talk about this very issue in the next segment, by the way, Dave Cullen. But, I mean, yeah, that's, that's the point. We've got to... Ride it until the wheels fall off, basically, at this point. The good thing that I've noticed over the past few years is <laughs> as long as we constantly bitch about it, and this is one of the methods that they use to keep us on the back foot, to keep us on the ropes, is to have to be constantly concerned about fighting censorship. So it prevents And then us that from scares other messages. people in a chilling effect. The answer is nobody yeah. be affected. Call their bluff, be outspoken. That's what Trump does is he makes it safe. Sorry. Go ahead. Exactly. So... You know, we, we fire it back on them. Use the Streisand effect to say this content is being censored, for example, on Facebook. So you put it on Twitter and say this is being censored. That automatically makes it get 10 times the traction because of the Streisand effect. Then if it's being censored on Twitter, then you say that on Facebook. You can ping pong it between the two for a certain amount of time, but eventually the wheels are going to fall off. I mean, that's the way it's heading. So we have to People have said this before, and we've said, well, what's the point in starting a new network? It hasn't got as much traction. We're just preaching to the choir. But it's going to come to the day where we basically have to. There are platforms already doing that. 
and, the, and historically, Paul, the censorship will be so bad on the other platforms, people will have to come over to the new ones. So we have to build it. They will come. They already have. You're absolutely right. So I'm glad we're having this discussion now on air. We should be having it in a few weeks when you get here to Austin, Texas to plan. We've been trying to get here for six months. Now, you know, you have to come. We have to plan next level because they're trying to arrest Nigel Farage right now for saying Sweden's the rape capital, even though we have the numbers it is in Europe with the Muslims. I mean, a very dark time where they're probably going to arrest you soon. Well, I mean, either that or they'll just, I mean, people are openly trying to solicit information for where I live now on Twitter. I complain about it. This does not violate our terms of agreement. Again, they don't care. It's a complete double standard. It's like with YouTube, the restricted mode. We talk about the same issues as CNN. None of their videos are disabled in restricted mode. Every single one of our videos are disabled in restricted mode. So it's not keywords. It's not headlines. They're doing it by the fact that it's Alex Jones and Paul Joseph Watson, CNN, NBC are not affected. It's a total double standard. Let's go to Devin in Florida. Devin in Florida, you're on the air. Great, hey, thank you so much. Listen, I have bought your products and I gotta say they're amazing. Thank Anyone you. who's on the fence, buy it because I've, I've got Caveman, Superman Vitality, Secret 12, Vitamin Mineral Fusion, I've got the body armor. Wow, thank you. Wow. You're the type of listener that makes it all possible. Which nutraceutical so, does you like best? I really like the, the vitamin mineral fusion, to be honest. That's it's amazing. Really incredible. I drank it in the morning, and I swear to you, I felt incredible. Like, I haven't felt weak. My morning was fantastic, and I and I love you guys. I love the InfoWars crew, and I just want to, yeah, I want to, I want to take this opportunity to tell anybody out there who's on the fence. Just buy it, you will love it. I'm telling you, I've never bought a bad product. What you find in our news is the same thing you find in our products at InfoWarsLife.com. It's a win-win, InfoWarsLife.com.